mastitis is the most important problem on dairy farms. It's a worldwide issue, absolutely. Uh, probably the single biggest direct cost to farmers on farm. In US studies, it's estimated it costs the US dairy industry about $2 billion a year. In Turkey, uh, economic loss due, uh, due to the mastitis, 300 million Turkish dirhams. It is very important. Direct costs, of course, if you have to treat the cow because she's sick um, and you have to discard milk. Indirect costs, loss of production. She produces less milk and with the same cost as a healthy cow. Farmers look at mastitis for the cost of the drug because they like to tell the vet he costs too much for the drugs. We have a higher risk to make any mistake and send antibiotic our, to our uh, bull tongue. If you have problems with clinical mastitis, uh, that's very obvious for the farmer, um, but sometimes they don't know even how much it is. For subclinical mastitis, in case there is only an elevated somatic cell count, they do not have symptoms, they do not see symptoms, and that you have small milk production losses for a couple of months, even years in some cases. Mastitis is definitely the uh, most costly disease for cattle breeders uh, or, or cattle or milk producers all over the world. It's really a big scenario about the milk control and cost is one of the things that we need to fix to understand better the milk quality and also the income for the farmer. I don't feel that uh, you can uh, control mastites using only one strategy. So if we're talking about environmental pathogens like E. coli, Klebsiella, uh, enterococci, some of the environmental streptococci, then we need to focus on where the cows live. If we're talking about contagious pathogens where primary transmission occurs during the milking process, then we need to focus on our, our milking system. So the things we can do to decrease the environmental challenge, to decrease the challenge from other infected cows, but at the same time we need to do what we can to boost the immunity of the cow. I think we, we now have the data to say that it's a one plus one is three component. You have to have good management in place. You can have a, a number of excellent vaccines and other tools in place and combined they will uh, help you produce the best possible uh, milk and milk products. On one side reducing the infection pressure for the other and on the other side to assist the cow in the immune response. We don't work with, uh, with cows. We work with the people who manage the cows. So we have to, to be able to transmit them that we have to work on prevention. Our first goal is to keep healthy our healthy cows. Only preventive measures like cow's welfare, uh, proper feeding, good uh, housing and of course vaccination brings uh, financial benefits. The more tools you can bring to the table to control mastitis, the greater chance you have of, of reducing mastitis in our herds. Now we, we have also new tools like, like vaccination against uh, mastitis, uh, which is also uh, available and now a vaccine against Staphylococcus aureus. And that's of course a preventive measure. What we can do new is how to convince farmers to utilize the tools we have already. In the last uh, five, ten years, we have been much more focusing on the on-farm diagnostic. We think uh, that the communication has to be solid. It has to be focused on, on the data from, from the farm. If you do all those things correctly, milk quality will be much, much better. I think the emphasis for, for long-term success in any mastitis control program has to be to reduce the rate of new infection. Vaccination is not an alternative. It's a complement of all our milk quality program. With the vaccine, you have the capacity to work on the cow. Vaccination, I think, is one uh, management strategy that you can use associated with other uh, preventive measure. All preventive things will cost money at first, but will bring better results at least. The cost to the dairy farmer for environmental mastitis caused by the gram-negative pathogens is primary clinical disease. And that vaccine has been successful because on most farms, it does cause a significant reduction in clinical disease, which therefore uh, saves the farmer money from the fact that they don't have to treat as many cows with severe clinical mastitis. Mastitis vaccination has a, has a very important role in, um, in, in most farm practices. In the United States right now, it's, it's somewhere between 60 and 70 percent of farmers are using vaccines. Staph aureus is, an, is a contagious pathogen that usually spreads from cow to cow during milking. And so the ultimate vaccine for a Staph aureus 
would be one that completely prevents infection because then we eliminate the reservoir for infection. Most vaccines will actually hopefully prevent an infection. Unfortunately, the mammary gland is, is a very difficult area to, to protect immunologically with a vaccine. So we need to point out he needs to do everything else. So hygiene in the barn, feed the cows properly uh, and do good milking routine. The positive thing of vaccination is you can choose whenever you do it. You need to have really clear data and you need to maybe fix or try to develop a specific vaccination plan for each farm. So we need to have this capacity to change every time the approach with different farms, different situations, different plants. And we estimated from that and have recently um, had a publication accepted in the Journal of Dairy Science that suggests a return on investment of 2.5, 2.6 to 1 purely in terms of increased milk yield before we get on to reductions in culling and reductions in severity of disease. The next generation is to go into prevention of uh, infections and prevention of problems. Uh, and now we have a very nice array of uh, vaccines to help out with that. So they're a very good tool in the toolkit to, to uh, resolve and, and maintain very high quality uh, of products.